The NASCAR family mourns the loss of Betty Jane France, who passed away earlier this week. Her love, compassion, and leadership impacted millions of lives through her tireless work, including with the NASCAR Foundation. Our thoughts and prayers are with the France family and the many lives she touched through the years. Please join us as we observe a moment of silence. Please remain standing as Dr. Bill Curtis, pastor of Cornerstone Baptist Church in Darlington, gives our invocation. Let's pray together. Gracious Father, we give you thanks for this beautiful day, the opportunity that we have to enjoy together here at the track, Too Tough to Tame. Father, we pray that you would show favor to the drivers, and to their teams, that you would keep them safe as they compete today. And as we enjoy this race together, help us to remember that every good gift comes from you. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Here to perform our national anthem, please welcome the Coker College Men's Vocal Ensemble. Saturday afternoon for Saturday and afternoon racing with the Lady in Black.
the guys who are the regulars in the series. We're trying to make our name and get to that Sprint Cup series. Kyle Larson's going to win in the Sprint Cup series. I think we're all trying to fight for the same goal, and I think that's everybody's mindset going into these races. There's no room for error. The greatest test comes from the racetrack. Chase Elliott wins in his first try at Darlington. Welcome back to Darlington Raceway. We get ready to kick off the throwback weekend with Xfinity Series Racing. For more on the storylines we'll be following, let's go to Mike Massaro. Oh, Rick, Bubba Wallace just climbed inside his race car, but just moments ago, he had a lengthy conversation with newly elected Hall of Famer Mark Martin, a great guy to talk to when it comes to this racetrack, especially considering he has eight Xfinity Series wins here. Today, Wallace pays tribute to Martin with his special paint scheme, a scheme that Martin ran in 1990 and 1991, and Wallace wants to give it one more good run here at the track too tough to tame. Marty? Well, Mike, you're not going to have a problem finding Kyle Larson today with the purple and yellow colors of country music star and NASCAR driver Marty Robbins. In fact, his name would have been right here. The triple seven would have been across the door. Kyle told me, I love this scheme and certainly going to be able to see us on the racetrack. Expect Kyle Larson to go to the front this afternoon, Kelly. Justin Allgaier's Cherry Red 7 car pays tribute to his sponsor's past. You see the Brant's fertilizer logo here on the back and all, though it looks nice and pretty now. It had a Darlington stripe on it earlier from practice this morning. They've just purely cosmetic. They fixed it up, and I doubt Justin cares what his car looks like as long as, as it's been seen in victory lane today. Dave? Kelly, over 285 starts in 12 years, Richard Childress often ran a paint scheme similar to the one Paul Menard has today. It was for the CRC High Performance Chemicals Company, and the red and white are emblematic of what that sponsor had when they were on RC's car. So let's get all those lubricants and all those pieces moving in these motors. It's time to fire the engines. And now, for the most famous words in motorsports, please welcome your Grand Marshal, Commander-in-Chief for Veterans Foreign Wars, Brian Duffy! Drivers, start your engines! Yes, sir. Bachman Turner Overdrive couldn't have said it any better. You ain't seen nothing yet. Darlington Throwback Weekend kicks off next.
NASCAR on NBC is brought to you by Credit One Bank, the official credit card of NASCAR, and by Toyota. Let's go places. Cars beginning to roll off of pit road and head on to this mile and a third track at Darlington. I want to take a look at the starting grid up front row one. Again, this set by the rule book because of no qualifying owner points. Paul Menard and Denny Hamlin making up row number one. Denny Hamlin, a four-time Darlington Xfinity winner. In row two, we have Elliott Sadler with the Dale Jarrett throwback scheme. Starting next to Ryan Blaney and only his fifth start this season. In row three, we have Daniel Suarez, who finished third in this race last year, his only start at Darlington, and Kevin Harvick, who's never won in 13 Xfinity starts at Darlington. Back in row four, Justin Allgaier and Ty Dillon, the 24-year-old out of Welcome, North Carolina, has the Childress paint scheme. That's a 1980 paint scheme for Ty Dillon. Just behind them in row five, Brendan Gaughan starting next to Eric Jones, who has never raced at Darlington in any series. Row six is made up of two first-timers here at the Darlington track, Brendan Poole and Brandon Jones. Back in row seven, Kyle Larson and Daryl Wallace Jr. Daryl Wallace Jr. has the Mark Barton throwback car. In row eight, we have Ryan Reed and a Bobby Allison throwback car. Starting next to Blake Cook and a Daryl Waldrop throwback car. Two more throwback schemes make up row nine. Ryan Sieg in the Dale Jarrett scheme and Dakota Armstrong in the Davies, Davey Allison throwback. Back in row ten, Jeremy Clements. The family was involved with NASCAR and his throwback scheme based on the 1957 Chevy Black Widow. And let's see if we can chat with Eric Jones on the radio, Jeff. Hey, Eric, it's Jeff. I'm at the NBC booth. You with us? Yeah, sir, four. Well, you have never raced at Darlington before. Tell us what it's like getting ready to start your first race with only 50 minutes of practice. Well, uh, I'm not really sure what to expect. So uh, 50 minutes of practice isn't a whole lot for my first time at any track, but especially here, so I'm just trying to figure it out as we go, but I think the uh, DeWalt Flex Hole camera is pretty good. Uh, we got good speed for sure, but starting a little farther back here at 10th than we want to, so hopefully we can make up some ground and make adjustments and stay up uh, stay up on it all day. Well, Eric, thank you for taking time to uh, spit, talk with us today, and good luck. Therefore, thank you. Eric Jones, one of three drivers with wins already on the 2016 season. We're going to ride along with a few drivers, including the 16 of Ryan Reed. He has the Lily Diabetes in-car camera. We'll start 15th today. Darrell Wallace Jr. with the Ford on board starts 14th. Brennan Poole has the DC Solar in-car camera and will start this race 11th. And just a bit closer to the front, starting 10th with the advanced auto parts onboard camera is Eric Jones. Today's aerial coverage provided by our partners at Smithfield Foods and this aerial coverage will give you a good perspective of the unique look of this racetrack an egg shaped mile and a third track. Also you get a bird's eye view of this racetrack kind of what the spotters have. When they're watching this racetrack as we listen into the 62's audio. And uh, are you good with numbers or do you want me to give you car colors today with the different colors? <laughs> uh, probably uh, whichever one's easier for you. You know, it might be tougher for you if you went for number right now. So if you got to do color, that's fine. As far as the numbers go, I just didn't know if you were familiar with them all. Just trying to help you out. That was spotter coverage presented by Liberty Mutual Insurance, helping drivers worry less. I'm not sure if Brendan was worried more or less after hearing that information. It will be difficult for spotters. It's going to be difficult for the drivers. As we take a look at the race analysis, 147 laps. And, Steve, this one is a sprint. 200 miles, pit road speed, 45 miles per hour. And we look at the fuel window, 60 to 63 laps. Tires probably won't last that long, though. Well, exactly. They might last that long physically, but these drivers are going to be screaming for tires well before lap 60. They just lose so much grip on this old South Carolina asphalt. There will be a competition caution at lap 25. That is because of the limited amount of time that they have had on the track. Again, just 50 minutes earlier today because of the storms that passed through. A uh, big difference on the front row as far as laps led. Denny Hamlin, he's led 448 laps here. Paul Menard, he's led no laps at Darlington. I, mean, 
I think one, two. I, I think this competition caution really changes the game for this first run because you know on lap 25 the caution's coming out, so you don't save anything. You're going to go uh, and run as hard as you can as soon as they drop the green flag. Some drivers at a racetrack like this where it eats tires up won't necessarily go as hard the first three or four or five laps to try to save a little bit of tire to make it last longer at the end of the run. But now, with knowing it's a 25-lap run, you're going to see these guys pushing hard as soon as the flag falls. You can watch every Xfinity Series race with the NBC Sports app and get closer with additional camera angles, driver stats, track information. It's available on mobile, tablet, and connected TVs. You can download the app and find out more at NBCSports.com slash live. Great assistance or assistant while you are watching this race. It is throwback weekend. There's Bobby Allison. Hall of Famer. There are 17 Hall of Famers here this weekend that will be enjoying the race with us. A great driver, but also a great innovator. Had a lot to do with the advancement of these race cars, making these race cars drive better. Uh, he could do both. He could work on them, design them, and also drive them. Bobby Allison, 84 wins, fourth all-time as far as the wins list. Jeff Gordon just passed he and Daryl Waltrip. Move up to third behind David Pearson and, of course, the King. Those are Sprint Cup wins as we get ready to kick off the Xfinity Series race in this throwback weekend. Turn one here is always very exciting. We talk about how narrow it is just running by yourself. Now these Xfinity drivers are going to have to work it out. Two by two going down into turn one. Just a call by Menard taking the bottom. Traditionally, that's the thing to do, but he's got Denny Hamlin on the outside. Let's see if he can beat him to one. Paul Menard on the inside, everyone standing, anticipating the green flag, it's in the air, we're racing from Darlington. A huge jump by Paul Menard, Denny Hamlin all the way back to fourth. A little bit different, the preferred line at Darlington, right up against the wall. We'll see how quickly they move up to the wall and how many can make the bottom line work. Paul Menard out in front. Elliot Sadler. Daniel Suarez, Denny Hamlin, Justin Allgaier in the top five. Suarez has been able to move up. Let's grab third away from Denny Hamlin, who was up on the front row. Allgaier behind him. We already see some interesting looks. This 22 is driven by Ryan Blaney this week. That's a little unique. We don't normally see Ryan Blaney in this Penske Xfinity car, but this will get a young man more laps at a very tricky racetrack. We saw that front row on the outside just didn't get going, and uh, that hurt Blaney as well. He started fourth, but he's already lost two spots running in sixth. And you already see the interesting groove. You know, you see right in the middle, one and two, right against the wall as they drive into turn three. As you mentioned, Steve, many different grooves can run the very bottom, run the very top. Uh, you see a lot of pavement. There's a lot of pavement on this racetrack, but you can't use it all. These guys are going to use every bit they can, though. Yeah, the apron is huge at this racetrack, and it almost looks like it's part of the racetrack, but where they run is very narrow. And right now, I see Blaney trying to make a move on the 7 of Allgaier. Not a good place to pass, leaving turn two, unless you have position in the middle of one and two. So Algar a little bit loose off of three. Let's see if Blaney can take advantage of it, getting into the ring. As we follow these two cars around, you see how you can set up to make a pass at a track like Darlington. He's going to run a little lower in the middle of three and four right here. Try to get that good run on corner exit. Basically, if he can get side by side on the front stretch, you would expect a seven to concede the position getting into turn one. But Ryan Blaney is unable to do it this lap. And Steve, you guys talked about how much Ryan Blaney could use the experience at this racetrack. Jerry Bowen said the same thing. This was the one he really wanted to run in Xfinity. His only Xfinity race here finished last. His only cup race here finished 30th. Laps will help this young driver a lot tonight. Ryan Blaney continuing to try to learn in this sport. And he's doing an excellent job. He also runs full time in the Cup Series. Now Kyle Larson in the 42 won a week ago, got his first Sprint Cup Series win at Michigan and trailing behind him the 62 of Brendan Gaughan. And guys, for Kyle Larson, he said, it's funny, everybody thinks I'm good at Darlington because I like to run the high line as is a battle for the lead, Rick. Here comes Elliott Sadler. He looks to the inside, trying to get by Paul Menard. 
has the inside line. It might not be the preferred one, but he makes it work this time entering turn one. And that was what I was talking about on how you make that pass under turn one. Elliot Sadler gets door to door with the two of Paul Menard, and Paul basically concedes the spot. He knows driving into turn one side by side is of no use to either of these two cars, especially this early in the race. And the reason why is it gets so narrow. As you enter turn one, you actually go up, up the hill, up the banking toward the wall, and two cars running there side by side is very, very difficult. So late in the race, you take that chance. But at this point in the race, you don't. You see again right here the 19 of Suarez giving the, giving the lane to Hamlin once Hamlin earned the spot. Those two are considered teammates running for Joe Gibbs Racing. Take another look, though, as they're two car lengths apart now. This moments ago, the 44, it's J.J. Yaley got a Getting a little loose. He was 18th, and that is the Darlington Strike Plus. Yeah, I was going to say that is a uh, that is a heavy contact with the wall here at Darlington. This is a little bit more of what we are used to seeing out of a Darlington Strike. We see Ryan Reed here. This gets a little high. Oh, that's that's like a Darlington Strike that's, minus. That might be a kiss. Yeah, that's, that's a Darlington say, that's kiss. Barely any contact here at Darlington. You see as we rode along with him. He went to turn, leaving turn two, which is a crazy corner, and just didn't get turned soon enough. And then the car didn't get didn't get turned. Ultimately, got into the wall. Out in front, it's Elliott Sadler leading at the track, too tough to tame. Paul Menard, Denny Hamlin, and Suarez, and Justin Allgaier, the top five. NASCAR Race View gives you access to features that let you follow your favorite drivers if you're at the track. Get live stats, leaderboards, driver and team communications, and more all on your devices. It's available now for an all-new low price when you visit NASCAR.com slash race view. Welcome back to the BFW Sports Clips Help a Hero 200. Just moments ago, the 22 of Ryan Blaney. I'm not sure if this is the lesson that he was trying to learn while well, running the Xfinity Series race, but he got up into the wall. Well, that's part of the lesson. That's the lesson of Darlington, of where the limit is. And you see right here, he just carries too much speed on corner entry, gets a little too high and into the wall. 
I won't say no damage, but relatively low damage for Darlington. Yeah, the truth of the matter is, if you run here long enough and you don't hit the wall, then you're not trying hard enough. It's just, <laughs> it's just that simple. You have to push, and if you push just a little bit too much, you're going to get in the wall. You can't get in the wall every lap or every race for that matter, but you, you have to every now and then use a little too much racetrack and get in the wall. Dave. A little bit loose on entry, a little bit loose on exit. That report just came down the line from Elliot Sadler, who was reminded by his spotter, by the way, to race the racetrack, something you'll hear all day long from your spotter. Mike? Yep, Eric Jones is hearing that very phrase over and over again. Race the racetrack. As Jones told us just before the green flag, he didn't really care for where he was starting. Tenth position. He's picked up two spots, but hasn't made any more progress because the balance of the race car, just not to his liking. Two. And as you heard the spotters say, just keep learning. They're trying to be as patient as possible, waiting for the competition caution before they go to work on this race car. Marty? Like Kyle Larson finds it funny that everyone else thinks the reason he's good at Darlington is because he likes to run the high groove. A former dirt racer back there in the 10th position, they usually like to run the high groove. But Larson said, when it's possible, I like to run three and four on the bottom. That's where my car is usually the best. Right now, the car a little bit too tight to run the bottom in three and four, trying to gain some positions up through the field. He started 13th, running 10th, Kelly. Brandon Jones has never raced here at Darlington, so he's spent a lot of time in the week talking to his teammates and on the simulator. He said the simulator helped visually, but the grip level was very different from what he experienced in practice this morning. He said his front tires today are chattering, and now he's saying, I just need more grip off both turns. Thank you, Kelly. Great updates from Pit Road. And Jeff Burton, I want you, when we come back from break, to explain Race the Racetrack from Darlington.
The caution has come out. It is not the or it wasn't initially the competition caution. It has become the competition caution. It was initially for B.J. McLeod who slammed into the inside wall, did a lot of damage to this 78 car. Yeah, racing off a of turn two side by side. It just gets so narrow. Uh, these two cars get together. Harmon and B.J. McLeod, they just get together. And that's a that's a place at a racetrack. You just try not to be side by side. You can see how narrow it gets. Uh, and they were fighting for position, trying to stay in the lead lap. And you see the leader, Elliot Sauter, in the one car on the bottom of the racetrack. Close call. A lot of damage to that Ford Mustang, and that will end up going behind the wall for B.J. McLeod. He had started 26th, was running 26th. There's no question right now. Everybody's going to pit. I mean, tires wear out quickly. Uh, you're going to you're going to see a lot of cars on pit road. Diving onto pit road, race leader Elliot Sadler bringing the rest of the field behind him. Let's go to Kelly. Justin Allgaier in that seven car making his way down pit road. He's cracked into the top four. He said that his car is really tight through the center. He has no grip on entry or exit. He's going to come to pit road to get some fresh tires. Haven't heard any word on adjustments yet for the seven. Dave. On, your, on your right, Kelly, the 18 is loose late exit. He needs more overall grip. Down below him, the two of Paul Menard, really, really loose. That's for Elliott Sadler, the leader. They're going to make a Ford Goodyear tire change, fill it full of Sunoco fuel. Elliott said it was loose in and off, but not a lot, just a little. Let's see how they exit pit road. And the race off pit road. Brought to you by Geico. Something you're going to see all day long. Four tire stop. No position change. The top four, B.J. McLeod and team will be picking up the pieces after this hit. NASCAR on NBC is brought to you by Ford. We go further so you can. Xfinity. Change the way you experience TV with Xfinity X1. And by Lilly Diabetes. 
the commander in chief for him, Hillary Clinton, Donald Trump back to back on one stage Wednesday night live on NBC at 8 p.m. Eastern. Side by side, two by two once again after everyone has come to pit road. Last time when they went by the start finish line, it was the 07 of Ray Black Jr. that was out front until he came to pit road. Dave. Rick, it's hot out today. Not uncomfortably hot, but Denny Hamlin has a complaint about it. No fun when the air conditioner is not working, Rick. I know. It's working up here, though, thankfully. That, that helmet hose blows cool air. It's also filtered air from carbon monoxide into the driver's helmet. So it sounds like to me the hose fell off. He will not be able to find that hose and get it put back on his helmet. Elliot Sadler on the inside. Denny Hamlin on the outside as they enter the restart zone, getting ready to get back underway. Great restart for Elliot Sadler. That's the second start we've seen Denny Hamlin struggle in that outside lane. Paul Menard taking advantage of following behind Elliott Sadler. Menard moves up to second. Denny Hamlin's going to settle in in third. We're going to take another look. NASCAR is going to review the restart just to make sure everything was legal. They spread out now, single file coming back across the start finish line. A legal restart is the leader of the race. You see two cars driving to turn one side by side. Now, can they work themselves clear of getting off turn two? But a legal restart is when the leader enters the restart zone, he can go. He can't go before. If he gets to the end of the restart zone and hasn't gone, then a flagman starts the race. But we're hearing from NASCAR saying that the restart was good. Restart is good, and the 48 of Brennan Poole working the inside line, trying to get by Ryan Reed in the 16. Two what young drivers would be interested to see if Ryan Reed concedes a position. He does not, and Ford's is Brennan Poole, and they're side by side. They about make contact, but luckily get it sorted out. Well, that's what we're talking about with younger drivers, how they race differently. They haven't been here before. This is Brennan Poole's first ever start here at Darlington. And here comes the 22 once again. That is Ryan Blaney behind the wheel of the 22 today and the 20 of Eric Jones. Eric Jones multiple time winner in the Xfinity Series in 2016 as Daniel Suarez makes the move. Great experience for Eric Jones. Remember he's, driving, he's moving up to Cup next year. They're going to drive for the Furniture Row team. So uh, really good experience to be able to come here and run this race. You'd hate to come to Darlington as a rookie in the Cup Series, never having run a race. But that really is a perfect example of the fast track that Eric Jones is on, to think that this is his first ever Darlington race, yet he's already moving up to the Spring Cup level. And that just shows you how much Rick Hendrick thinks of you know, these drivers and, and Joe Gibbs racing, the younger drivers that are making their move. Kevin, right Harvick, now. Yeah, Kevin Harvick making a real aggressive move in the, in, in the middle of one and two. That's, a, that's a, a line you can take, but the guy on the outside almost has to concede it once you get there. If not, you enter turn two side by side. And this seems just like the first run. We see Denny Hamlin struggle off the initial start in the outside lane, lose a few positions, then the car either gets better or he settles into a groove. Now he's putting pressure on the two of Paul Menard for second. Although, as I say that, Paul Menard gets a great turn one yeah. and distances himself a little bit from the 18 of Denny Hamlin. Trying to close the gap between he and the one of Elliott Sadler. So the top three drivers, Elliott Sadler, Paul Menard, Denny Hamlin. And now the 88s, Kevin Harvick making his way onto the apron and onto pit road early. He'll be coming to you guys. Kevin Harvick lost three positions on that four-tire pit stop, was running fifth here before he came to pit road. I don't see any damage on the right side. Must be a mechanical issue, Marty. He said one word on the radio, it broke, Rick, or actually that was two words, but he said broke on the radio. So uh, obviously an engine problem for Kevin Harvick as he coasts past the team, straight into the garage area. Yes, the engine's silent. Clearly a motor problem for Kevin Harvick. And that's really surprising, only 34 laps in. Remember, we only had 50 minutes of practice, so there's really been very little track time all day long for the 88 car. Surprising to have a mechanical issue. We see Denny Hamlin trying to turn underneath the two of Paul Menard. Menard got a little loose. 
getting off turn two and Denny Hamlin takes advantage of it going into three. He has that second spot but he's staying down on the bottom part of the racetrack. And Rick we've done good we keep putting Denny Hamlin in that 18 white Toyota sport clips looks just like a sprint cup car when the 11 car number. And again behind him Paul Menard in the two. Throwback paint schemes for both drivers. Ryan Blaney as well as Kyle Larson. Kyle Larson just moments ago in that 42 known for running right up against the wall got loose and into the wall. Marty. And guys that's the second time Kyle Larson has hit the wall today. We've talked about how he actually likes to run the low line here at Darlington but the car's been so tight he's having to run that high line. In fact he got a Darlington stripe. That's what you call it when you get into the wall like that on the first run of the day and they told him listen the right rear took a pretty big hit then it can't afford another one. So already a second Darlington stripe for Kyle Larson so far today. And Kyle Larson with the throwback paint scheme from Marty Robbins. Country singer had 17 number one hits. Speaking of number one, Elliot Sadler out in front. Denny Hamlin and Paul Menard running second and third. Denny Hamlin not only running second, but running the fastest laps on the racetrack pretty consistently. Trying to catch that one of Elliot Sadler. And we've seen Denny Hamlin run a little bit lower line. He's about a half a groove below what we've seen everyone else run. And then as quickly as I say that Elliot Sadler runs in the middle of the track and Denny Hamlin runs right up against the wall. And it looks to me like that while Elliot Sadler might have got through the middle of the corner a little bit better that exit off the top line definitely seemed better for Denny Hamlin. Elliot Sadler doesn't want anyone to break his stride. Denny Hamlin mentioned an air conditioning incident or an issue that he has. Let's go down to the Toyota Camry on track car for more on that. 
Yeah, you can see this hose that's laying on top of the seat right here. Uh, that hose is connected to the air conditioning system that cools the air and also filters carbon monoxide. That goes to the helmet, and if that comes unhooked, it's very hard for the driver to get his hands around the back of the helmet and find that hose. So he may be able to get it, hook back up, but I'd be surprised if he could. I know I never could. If it came unhooked, I was done. 44 laps complete of a 147 lap race out front. Elliot Sadler has actually led more laps than he had led all season long as he now has Denny Hamp right behind him. Hamlin once again has closed the gap for the lead. You see Hamlin running the very top in one and two and while the one of Elliott Sadler's running the bottom. Now this lap traffic, let's see if they play a role side by side into one. Elliott Sadler having to check up just a bit because he's caught up with the lap traffic, but Denny Hamlin kept his momentum high. They're both working around Joey Gase in the 52. And the gap that was about three car lengths is now down to two between Elliott Sadler. And Denny Hamlin, Sadler looking strong though through three and four. You see Sadler thought the lap car was going to stay on the bottom of the racetrack, but the lap car came up the racetrack, slowed him down, slowed where he wanted to be down. It's allowed Hamlin to catch right up. We had mentioned Eric Jones and his progression as the Inside. pass for the lead oh, takes here. place. Oh, Denny Hamlin easily by Elliott Sadler. But the progression of young drivers, Eric Jones, and Joe Gibbs Racing, seeing a lot of promise in him. William Byron, Rick Hendrick has already tapped him as the next driver for him. These young drivers that are making a name either in the Camping World Truck Series or the Xfinity Series, getting opportunities to go to the next level. Yeah, and you got guys like Denny Hamlin have so much experience. You saw that movie made uh, in the center of one and two. He was able to turn underneath Elliott Sadler, find grip on the bottom of the racetrack. And once you position yourself on the bottom of the racetrack, it's hard for the guy on the outside not to give you that spot because the exit of turn two gets very tight. If, if you have momentum and you can get, you know, get half of your car in front of him, that's all you need because it now puts the outside car in a tough spot. So really nice move by Denny Hamlin. Early out of this race, the driver of the 88, Kevin Harvick, spoke with Marty Snyder just moments ago. One minute, Kevin Harvick's making a pass to go into the top five, and then all of a sudden, the engine broke. Any idea what happened? I think they said it broke a crankshaft, so it was sudden. Never had any smoke or anything, just locked up. So just got to thank everybody from Armour and Junior Motorsports. Like you say, they made some really good adjustments right there to, to start passing cars and going in the right direction. So I love racing here at Darlington. I hate that we don't get to finish today because it's a lot of fun to drive and uh, look always look forward to this weekend. Very short day for Kevin Harvick here at Darlington. Short and unfortunate. Kevin Harvick hasn't had the luck that he's had at other racetracks. Never won in the Xfinity Series at this track. Rick, we were showing a lot the battle between Denny Hamlin and Elliott Sadler. We're back here in the battle for fifth, sixth, and seventh between Allgaier, Suarez, and Kyle Larson has been heating up as they caught the slap traffic. It seems like the seventh a little bit better than the 19 at times, but has a little bit harder time getting through lap traffic. 74. Oh, and around goes the 90. Mario Goslin yeah, brings out the fire. second Could caution. Back up to get it fired. Mario was running 25th. Got around and damage to that car. So about another stretch of 25 to 30 laps, which we saw earlier, the first run of the day. The one thing that comes into play here is we still have not reached the halfway point of this race is the limited amount of tires that the Xfinity Series has. This was just a bit earlier with Mario. Three wide just never going to work out at Darlington, especially on corner entry. And he found himself on top of the race track, on top of the other two cars, and ended up getting in the debris and then just couldn't keep it off the wall. And then right here, couldn't see what started that contact. We see the 93 car on the outside of him. Uh, I'm not sure what started that, but again, two cars trying to navigate a tough, a tough narrow racetrack. Yeah, the 93 of David Starr. We saw him out of shape. Looks like the two had pretty major contact there. 
David Starr did a really nice job of not getting the wall. You saw how quickly that car turned right. He was able to get it turned back left and use the brakes properly and keep it out of the wall. So with the limited number of tires, Steve, do you come and put four tires on? Absolutely. You still have six sets for the race. So you started a set on the car, five sets in the pitch. You've used one of those. You still have four sets left with 95 laps to go. Everybody will come into pit road and put a set of tires on. And they are following Denny Hamlin. Kelly. And you'll see Ty Dillon in the three car making his way to pit road. A fast stop last time helped crack him into the top five. Ty now saying that the right rear is sliding around a little bit too much. He's looking for more stability on exit. They're going to make a track bar adjustment, moving it down for him. They'll also give him four tires and Sunoco fuel. Dave? Denny Hamlin, the leader, pretty happy with his race car. Maybe just an air pressure adjustment this time. The two of Paul Menard, they told him he'd give him a little bit more to lean on, along with four Goodyear tires and a fill of Sunoco fuel. As for Elliott Sadler, lower left in the one car, he said, I feel like I'm using my right rear tire too much. Air pressure adjustment for Sadler. And the race off pit road, a close one between Denny Hamlin, Elliott Sadler, and Ty Dillon. Hamlin wins that race off pit road. Take a look at today's Toyota driver update early on in this one. 55 laps complete. Denny Hamlin leading the race. Daniel Suarez, Eric Jones, JJ Yaley, Dakota Armstrong running 20th. Tomorrow, Sprint Cup Series racing right here at Darlington. It's throwback time, race coverage beginning at 6 p.m. Eastern on NBC. Jeff Gordon subbing once again for Dale Earnhardt Jr. has seven wins at Darlington leads all the active drivers. Mike. Just a quick update on Eric Jones. This is his first visit to the Lady in Black, and it has not necessarily been a pleasant one. A lot of I don't knows, the car's loose, the car's wrecking loose. Lots of frustration on the radio. And Jeff, what's it like coming to this place for the first time? Well, it's intimidating when you come here for the first time, but typically you have enough practice to kind of sort it out, you know. But with this short, with this only 50-minute practice, uh, it's very difficult to go out and try stuff. And, 
uh, do things as a driver and just work on you because you're having to work on your car to try to get it the way you want it to get it. So you're working on the car and the driver at the same time. So the limited practice really hurts with a new driver. This should be an interesting restart as Elliott Saddle will be on the outside. Denny Hamlin, race leader, has chose the inside line. That's always been the one that's moved. Denny Hamlin has had some bad restarts to start this race as they're back in the restart zone. And this time, the 18 of Denny Hamlin, a better restart. He did get a better restart rig, but it seemed like the one of Elliott Sadler was more successful in the out outside lane than Denny Hamlin was. And now the one of the three are racing to soon get to turn two first. They don't want to be here side by side. They still are side by side, but Elliott cleared him down the back straightaway. Elliott out front, still side by side behind Ty Dillon. Regan Smith in the seven down on the bottom of the racetrack. Such history at this racetrack, built back in the first race back in 1950. This is what's hard when you're talking about a young driver of Eric Jones riding along with Eric. You know, this is what's so difficult about this racetrack. You, out there by yourself is one thing, but now you're having to race these guys on a racetrack that does not have two grooves at places where you need to pass. So the only way to learn is to go out and do it. The only way to get better is to go out and experience it, make some mistakes. And we know Eric Jones, how quick of a learner he is. And I can promise you, he'll be better when he comes back here next year than he was when he unloaded today. Lincoln Smith still trying that inside line with the seven. Now we'll slide up the racetrack. See what, what happened. The 20 was not able to turn down and be in the line he wanted to because the 19 of Suarez was there, lost his momentum. Now Suarez has got pressure on him. 20 almost in the wall. Going to use the high line on the exit of turn four. Nice job. For a guy that's never been here before, that's doing a really good job knowing the racetrack and how to use the racetrack to your advantage. And the 42 of Kyle Larson saw that opening. He got to the top of three and four, jumped in the gas really early, carried that momentum by the 19 of Daniel Suarez, who lost two spots in that exchange. Now the 42 of Kyle Larson is looking to the inside of Eric Jones. And that's one of the things you have to pay attention to at this racetrack. Every time an opportunity presents itself to pass doesn't mean that's when you need to pass. If you try to make a pass on somebody in an area of the racetrack where your car is not very good, their momentum will carry them by you, and you can lose more spots than you'll potentially gain. So understanding when to make that move, like right there, Eric Jones backing out of that move is a smart thing to do. It's going to cost him a spot probably, but had he not backed out, he probably would have been in a wreck right there. Jeff, just some fantastic racing as Kyle Larson shoots around Eric Jones there. And Kyle said, I just need help exiting both two and four. The car is just way too tight. And they feel like they're giving up too much ground early in a run. They feel like they can catch people later in a run, but they're giving up too much ground early on, although Kyle's making a little progress right here. And you've had cars like that at Darlington Navigate, Jeff. Very good on the front end, not very good on the front end of a run, but it pays off because you have to be good on older tires at Darlington. Larson going for another spot right there. That is a good move again. The same move we saw Denny Hamlin use to take the lead. So, uh, yes, I, I would. I like a car that's good on the long run and the short run. It's hard to do that here. If I have my choice, I'm going to take one that's good on the long run because that's when you see the big variance in speed and you can make a lot of ground up. So you want a, time, a car that's good all the time? I yes. noticed that, by the yes. way, too. He wants a, a car that runs well why? at the beginning of a run and at the end of the run. That's why he wants so many races, because he <laughs> understands right. what he wants. But as we watch these guys race, the 42 of Kyle Larson is interesting. Marty said that it needed better drive off the corner. One of those reasons is I believe the 42 does a good job of not overdriving the entry. As you watch this group battle right here, watch how all four cars can carry different entry speeds. You see the three and the 22 kind of close up on one another getting into the corner, but that's not where you make up the speed. It's who can get back to the gas sooner and carry the momentum off the corner. And that off the corner speed is a lot of times generated by your entry speed. I know that sounds crazy because they seem so far away, but if you get into the corner, correctly, it really helps line your car up. Suarez making a move now on the three of Ty Dillon. Ty's having an issue. He's going backwards for sure. Ty going the wrong direction as he'll drop back to ninth now, trying to stay in the top ten. Denny Hamlin, Elliott Sadler, Paul Menard, Justin Allgaier, and Eric Jones, the top five. Mike. And an update on Brandon Poole, another guy making his first visit to Darlington. And he prepared by looking at some in-car camera from Kyle Larson earlier this week. He told us that he learned quite a few things, where to lift, where to brake, how to enter the corner. And especially, he noticed how Kyle Larson sets up a pass. It's something that Brandon has been using throughout the course of the day. A pretty solid run so far. Was a little rough on the right rear tire over the course of that last run, but has learned how to conserve a little bit more during this particular run right now. Rick. Thank you, Mike.
Take a look at the Chase standings. Only three drivers, three Xfinity Series drivers with wins on the 2016 season. The rest still trying to fight their way in based upon points. Ryan Sieg right on the cut line. Only 12 drivers will make it into the chase for the Xfinity Series. New this season for these drivers, a chase. There will be seven races in the Xfinity Series chase. Four drivers eliminated after each round. And four will fight for the championship at Homestead. Out front now, Denny Hamlin. Today's aerial coverage provided by our partners at Smithfield Foods, giving you a great perspective of Darlington Raceway. The Lady in Black will host tomorrow's Cup Series race. First on NBCSN at 2 o'clock, it's IndyCar Series racing from Watkins Glen, NASCAR America at 5 o'clock, and countdown to green for tomorrow's race, which will be on NBC at 6 o'clock. Post race at 10 30 and victory lap at 11. The six of Daryl Wallace Jr. has the throwback paint screen scheme of Mark Martin from the 90 91 Cup Series seasons and Mark Martin will join the crew. On the pre race show tomorrow the future Hall of Famer. Part of the broadcast team. Mike. And Bubba Wall is certainly Rick trying to have a better run than what he's had so far. He rolled off 14th and has dropped a few positions so far. That's because the car has not been doing what he wants. At one point he said he was on the splitter. Another point he said he felt like the steering was unresponsive. And the last thing he said is that he's extremely loose. And he feels like the car might be holding him back right now, just riding it out, hoping to make adjustments next time down pit road. But right now, the car not giving Bubba exactly what he needs. Kyle Larson seemed to be the man on the move. Even 
watch a great race between the 42 of Larson and the two of Minari. You see right here, Larson was trying to run a little bit higher to help his exit of turn two. He had used that run, that move a few laps before, and it worked really well for him, but that time he just got a little bit too high. You see right here what happens when you catch a, a lap car on the exit of turn two. The seven of Algar had no choice but to slow up. The 20 did a really good job behind him of not getting into the back of him. In that replay, we saw the 42 get in the fence. He was still the third fastest car on the racetrack. So just because you got a dialing to stripe doesn't mean it's going to slow your car down. And it hasn't slowed down this 42. He's closing in on the second place car of Elliott Savin. And he only knows one speed. He's going to he's going to aggressively go after this racetrack. Uh, he's going to have he's going to have scuffs and marks on his race car when it, when it's over. That's just how he's going to drive it. He is not afraid of scrubbing the wall. He's not afraid of driving the car loose. See if that works for him for the whole race, but he has a fast race car. He's now gotten himself up to third. You know, again, he started in the back because of points. So Kyle Larson's all the way up to third. Driver that has never finished outside the top ten in either the Xfinity Series or the Cup Series at this racetrack. Let's go through the field. We'll start with Dave Burns. And Rick, the leader, Denny Hamlin, likes the balance and the handling of his race car, except it's a little bit too loose right now. And there's still the question of the air conditioning. We were just trying to look at it, make sure everything was all good there. You know, these Xfinity cars don't have the in-cockpit track bar adjuster, but sometimes the uh, driver has to reach behind him and connect some things to make him work. As for Elliott Sadler, he has been in the wall this run. Crew chief asked him how much. That's Kevin Mendering doing the asking. Elliott responded back, uh, not any worse than the other cars. Just as simple. Darlington Stripe, Marty. Well, Dave, the Darlington Stripe tally for Kyle Larson back there in third is up to three, which matches his position on the racetrack right now. He told the team a few times, I just need a little more front grip. Again, giving up too much time at the beginning of a run and flirting with that wall on every wall on every lap. He just needs to get back to the gas quicker, and there he is, a little loose off the corner again, Dave. Marty, the two team tried to help Paul Menard in a couple of ways. On the right rear window, they pulled off something or opened up something called a NACA duck so he could lean on that car a little bit more. Perhaps the guys can explain that a little further when we get it back to them. They also told him that the 18 and the 42 are hauling butt up high. Go a little higher, Paul. Behind him, the 22 of Ryan Blaney trying to get laps and experience here. What did he do before he got here? Well, he watched tape, just like any player would do with his coach. Jeremy Bowens and him watched the leaders in traffic to see how they managed it best, Mike. Eric Jones, another one of those guys who watched tape, also spent time in a simulator this week, Dave, trying to prepare for his first race here in Darlington. In fact, he took a cautious approach to practice earlier today, something he doesn't normally do at an oval. Why? Well, he said, I know this place is different. The first 81 laps of this race has certainly reinforced that. In his mind, he scrubbed the wall not too long ago and is still struggling to get a handle on this race car, Dave. Mike, last year, the orange car driven by Daniel Suarez, he finished third, finished se uh, started second, finished third, and led 14 laps. But he said what I learned was really about patience here. So far today, his car has been very loose, although a little bit better on this last run, Kelly. Justin Allgaier, seven car looks clean now, but it did pick up a Darlington stripe in practice earlier today. And because of the throwback scheme, it's got a wrap on it, not paint. So he tipped in and helped the team out using a razor blade to help peel away pieces of that and put the throwback scheme back together right now. Justin's just saying he is way too loose to do anything that the guys ahead of him are doing. He's trying to run the low line. Behind him, Ty Dillon, another car that has lost several spots since the restart. He said he's just way too loose. He's going on to say, we've really messed this car up. We're going to have to take a big swing at it next stop. Mike? Kelly, after Brennan Poole got out of the car, completing his first ever practice here at Darlington, he said, man, that was really cool. Loved running at the top of the racetrack. That's what he's been doing today, although he's been searching, searching for the right line, trying to find grip wherever he can, a place where he can run fast. Pretty happy with the balance of the race car. Still has some ground to gain, though, as he runs 10th. Rick? Thanks, Mike. Great job through the field. Steve, knock it up. So basically, Nakaduck is something that goes in the quarter window. It allows air into the car. The reason the teams open it is you think it's only to allow air in the car to cool, but what teams have learned is if you open them on the right rear quarter window, it can actually change the downforce of the car. It seems like they need to make an aero adjustment to get their car handling better. And that's exactly what the team has done. Denny Hamlin, he started one other race this year in the Xfinity Series. That race was at Charlotte. He went on to win. 
that race. The only other Xfinity Series race he has run. He's already won four Darlington races before. We'll see if he can make it five today. To purchase tickets to the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series race at Richmond next weekend, the last race before the chase, visit NASCAR.com slash tickets. Welcome back to the VFW Sport Clips Help a Hero 200. Race for the lead, heating up. 42 of Kyle Larson. Now all over Denny Ham. Rick, we're having it. Jeff and I are having a conversation about this. We're not sure if. The 42 is better than the 18, or if oh, the 18, 18 got in the wall just a little bit. He did, or if the 18 was only running hard enough to stay in front of the 42, but after seeing the 18 hit the wall, I think that answers our question that he's trying to stay in front of the 42, but I'm not sure he'll be able to. I'm trying to guess which way to go with this lap car. Oh, outside, outside, big outside, move outside, by the 42. Outside. Took the outside line. Kyle Larson exits the turn, and he's the leader. You could see him trying to figure out where the lap car was going to go, but. Kyle Larson just jumped on the outside of Denny Hamlin. Aggressive move to go on the outside. And that 42 of Kyle Larson, that pink and yellow car you see right there took the lead, restarted sixth on lap 57. So basically, roughly 40 laps ago, start, restarted sixth, drove all the way to the lead. Guys, for the 18 car, he was so loose this run, he complained about it to his crew chief. And uh, Chris Gale said to him, well, did we get 50% of it better? And he said, no, more like 25%. So very free for the 18. And Dave, the man who stole the lead from him, Kyle Larson, who's come up through the field with some very bold moves. A bold move to take second and an aggressive move to get the lead, as you guys mentioned. And he just radioed to the crew. His crew chief, Mike Chiplett, said, hey, those changes we make on the last stop help. Kyle said, no, not really. So the car's still not very good for Kyle Larson, and he's still able to get to the lead. Yeah, Marty, it's Darlington. Nobody's car is going to drive very good. But look at this move right here. They're both trying to figure out where the lap car is going to go. Kyle just gets done. He just gets hard away and he just jumps on the outside of the 18. An aggressive move. Now the eight, now the 42 is in the preferred line. He can carry his speed off the corner. So 
making that move put the 18 in a bad spot. Now to get second, watch this move, aggressive move. The one car goes to turn off, gets a little loose. 42 jumps on the outside on the outside of two. That's something you never see. So two aggressive moves took him from third to second and then second to the lead. Again, Marty Robbins, the reason for the paint scheme for Kyle Larson. Marty Robbins actually made 35 Cup Series starts from 1966 to 1982. Let's see who is on the move. Brought to you by Lilly Diabetes. Kyle Larson, 12 spots. David Starr, 12. Derek Cope, 7. J.J. Yaley, 6. Ryan Priest, 6. Drivers on the move. Of course, the most obvious out front is that 42 of Kyle Larson. The last race he was in, he went to victory lane at Michigan in the Cup Series. Look back at Ryan Reed. And the hands moving and working diligently at this racetrack. Ryan Blaney in the 22. Trying to catch up to Paul Menard. That's a battle for the fourth spot. Paul Menard has it. Ryan Blaney trying to take it. Past halfway, just 51 laps to go as we go NASCAR nonstop. Xfinity Series racing here at Darlington where green flag pit stops have just begun. Justin Allgaier, who has a car that's just way too loose, has come down to pit road and he was just hanging on. Four tires for Justin Allgaier, Mike. Kelly Bubba Wallace, another guy complaining about a loose race car. Four tire change and a chassis adjustment wedge on the left side. And there's Ty Dillon who lost several places since the last restart again just because of a loose car. He told his crew chief to take a big swing at it this go around. And you see the chassis adjustment there with the run. It'll also be for Goodyear tires and Sunoco fuel for Ty Dillon, Dave. 
The 18 of Denny Hamlin is on pit road. Remember, a very loose race car. You see the track bar adjuster going in the rear window. He'll get rounds there for Goodyear tires and Sunoco fuel. Elliott Sadler is on pit road as well. He's going to get a wedge adjustment. He was talking about a race car that was loose on throttle. And there's a spin on the racetrack. It's Kyle Larson. Rick. Kyle Larson, race leader around. Well, Kyle Larson spun to get to pit road, Rick. It looked like he was trying to get the pit road spun out. And then as he tried to get back on the racetrack, something got these guys right here must have saw it or somehow got in an accident. This is the second year in a row. The 42 of Kyle Larson missed pit road last year here. And a big it's, wreck for Car Carl Long in the 13. This is a difficult pit road to get on, perhaps the most difficult. You see Kyle Larson, you know, just not turned quick enough, carrying way too much seed. This this pit road. An apron is very, very dirty, has a lot of sand on it, and if you get in there too hot, you just miss it. So two years in a row, uh, he's missed pit road. That's, I mean, you gotta learn. You gotta be willing to back your speed up a little bit and make sure you get on pit road. See, last year, coming on pit road, just did not get slowed down enough. Didn't spin this time. Yep. But again, you just, it's just turning too late. You gotta turn way sooner than you think you need to turn. At most racetracks, turning that late's fine, but at this racetrack, you have to get onto the apron much sooner. And that was after Ross That's Chastain right. in the four got into the back of the 13 of Carl Long. Also, Ryan Blaney in the 22 is sliding. It looked to me like the 22 is trying to get on pit road perhaps as well. And as he started to spin, the 13 checks up and the four doesn't see him, makes heavy contact. Listen, the 22 has damage on the back of this car. I wonder if he was trying to get on pit road and got hit from behind. Let's listen in to Kyle Larson. I've got a flat. 10 for it must be on the right side. The lefts are good. My bad, guys. Sorry. Look, look, you cannot see the entrance of pit road here. So when you drive into turn three, you can't see it. It's not until you get halfway through the corner before you can see it. But if you wait to turn to get on pit road before you, when you see the cone, it's too late. You have to turn way before you can see it. And, you know, some of that goes to only having 50 minutes of practice and not being able to practice getting on pit road. But, you know, it's just a difficult pit road. You see Ryan Blaney. He trying was, to get to pit road. Yeah, he he was, got help. Yeah, he was way slow getting on pit road. The guys behind him did not know he was getting on pit road, and they ran into the back of him. And I hope some of the Sprint Cup guys are watching this race. That's one of them right there, a Sprint Cup guy. And he did this last year, did it again this year. This is just how hard this pit road is, Marty. And Steve, here's the other problem. He thinks he has a flat on the left side, so he's trying to nurse this car back around. And again, he's still in position here that if they leave pit road, he still has a shot to win this thing. But you can see all the Darlington stripes he has on the right side as well. So a lot of damage on this 42 car, but still in contention as long as everything goes well on this stop. Well, he's going to have to have everything go well, but the issue he's going to have is that some cars that have already made their pit stop are on the lead lap. So he's definitely going to lose positions to about six cars that will stay on the racetrack. And you, and, and you heard him say he had a flat tire, so you hope the tire doesn't come apart uh, while he's riding around waiting to get on pit road. If the tire comes apart and damages the car, that's another issue they could have. But uh, almost every race here, we see a car miss pit road, have a problem on pit road. It's something, as a driver, when you come here, you have to be aware of it. You have to. Just get and you would on think he road. would be aware of it yeah, since you just, he did it last year. You have to get on pit road way slower here than everywhere else you go. And, and again, it's all about turning early, getting the car slowed down, and, and just give a little bit of speed up. You can't do it here like you do it at Michigan, like you do it at most racetracks. Friday night, the Xfinity Series will be at Richmond. At coverage beginning at 7 p.m. Eastern on NBCSN. Here goes Chase Elliott checkered flag out front for the most laps is Denny Hamlin led 43 Elliott Sadler led 39 Kyle Larson had led 12 before trying to come to pit road there and spinning Ryan Blaney scored as the race leader in the 22 Brennan Poole second Kyle Larson third we go NASCAR nonstop
Back at Darlington, pit stops underway. Kyle Larson, top right of your screen. They did not have to fix anything on that car. They just put four fresh Goodyear tires on it and sent him on his way. Kelly. Jeremy Clements in that Black Widow number 51 car said he was a little bit tight through the center. They're going to raise the track bar four tires for Jeremy Clements. Dave. Ryan Blaney will be here for an extended period of time. They're going to work on that race car. Josh Williams, the spotter, radioed to the crew, said you definitely need to work not just on the right rear, but the left rear as well. And that's where the focus is right now. See the race off pit road. And we go back to NASCAR nonstop. Carl Edwards was down, but he was never out. Add his name to the legends at Darlington. Awesome. Way to go, team. Woo! We made it Carlington for a couple of moments. Carl Edwards came from two laps down a year ago to win. Tomorrow. Brick Cup Series racing from Darlington. It's throwback time. Race coverage beginning at 6 p.m. Eastern on NBC. Rick, we have had quite the series of events here. So Kyle Larson, the race leader when green flag pit stop started, spun coming to pit road with just a little over a second lead. Here's the 42 trying to come to pit road. At this point, he's in trouble. He's missed the pit road entry. He's losing time. But the saving grace for Kyle Larson, this spin was not going to cause a yellow. But then as he's sitting here trying to get going back the right direction, the 22, I believe, is coming to pit road, Jeff. We both think he's lifting to come to get pit road. He gets run into causing an accident on the racetrack. That creates a yellow flag condition, actually saving Kyle Larson time. So Kyle Larson pits, comes off from pit road. Now he's going to start fifth, which is behind the other, or excuse me, yeah, fifth, behind the four cars that pitted under green flag. Marty? And through all of that, see, they actually gained a spot here on pit road. Let's talk to his crew chief, Mike Shipwood. Feel like he kind of dodged one there, Mike? Yeah, there was a, you know, he's he's given everything he can. Everybody in here is giving everything he can. We just want to win this great race here in Darlington today. 
I asked him any concern with the body damage on the right side there, and he's had three Darlington stripes today, Rick. He said, nah, car's built for that. We're ready for it. <laughs> they plan for the Darlington stripe. Let's listen into the radio. Let's get right back in the room here. So I've got plenty of time to get up front there. You're, you know, by far the fastest car. So just get by these guys as soon as you can. We'll get up there, get the lead, and we'll get cruising. And listen, it doesn't sound like a lot, but these guys came in and put on tires. They have absolutely no hard corners, no laps, anything on those on their tires. Everybody in front of them pitted before them. And not, now they may only have run one lap, you know, or one corner, but still here that makes a difference. So even though it's not a lot of laps, Kyle Larson, without a doubt, has the best tires on his race car right now. And seemed to be the fastest car on the racetrack when the green flag pit stops were taking place. And on a longer run. There's right. only 37 to go. He can't afford to be better on a longer run. He's got to make some hay right now. Brenda Gaughan was too fast on pit road. So he will be serving that penalty as they get ready to come into the restart zone. Denny Hamlin, Elliott Sadler. Green flag back in the air. Well, he's out with a good start. Keep talking about give and take going into turn one with 37 to go. I think there's going to be less. How about Kyle Larson? Three wide around the bottom. Race for the lead. Up top, Elliott Sadler trying to get by Denny Hamlin. He'll make the pass. All that was because of the start he got. Being able to enter side by side into one, be able to carry that speed to the middle one and two. That's what allowed him to take the lead. Now, how fast can Kyle Larson get through this field? Remember, he has a little bit better tires. Car's better on long run. Kyle Larson up to fourth. Elliott Sadler running a little bit lower line than everyone else. And I think Elliott Sadler has to know that Kyle Larson back there in fourth might be his biggest competition. He likes the fact that he doesn't get easily up through traffic to use those fresher tires. Larson running fourth. Elliott Sadler, Denny Hamlin, Daniel Suarez in front of him. Suarez running the high line early in this late race run. 35, now 34 laps to go. As four cars have separated themselves from the pack. Once again, you see in the early on this run, Kyle Larson's actually given up a little bit of time. And you know, with 34 to go, you can't get too far back. We've seen how fast he is on a long run, but if you get too far back, you will not have enough time to catch him. But Jeff, 34 to go still are quite a few laps at Darlington. How about Denny Hamlin back there in second? Daniel scores in third. Is Denny Hamlin, the veteran Sprint Cup driver, is he saving a little bit of rear tire right now, letting Elliott Sadler go out there and burn his stuff, or is he running as hard as he can trying to get to the lead? Daniel Suarez doing a really good job. You mentioned a young driver following the Cup veteran. Danny's won, Danny's won a lot of races here, so great opportunity to learn a lot. Uh, Suarez has done a really good job of adapting to these cars over the last several years, just keeps improving and keeps impressing. Daniel Suarez, 24-year-old out of Monterey, Mexico. Running third, already has a win this season at Michigan earlier. Well, we talk about these guys at the front here doing a great job trying to win the race, but there's some other cars here in the top 10 that have really put together some great racing. Jeremy Clements in the seventh position has run a nice, smooth race. We talk about how difficult Darlington is. You have to race the racetrack. From right down the street, well, I say down the street, maybe 100, yeah. 125 miles away in Spartanburg, South Carolina. Family run racing operation running in the seventh position. And when you say family run, this family has been involved in NASCAR for a long, long time. Actually, Jeremy's great grandfather, or great grandfather, Crawford, and great uncle, Lewis, built engines for the Black Widow, which ran in the 19. 50s, and that's the throwback scheme that he has on this car. Well, Jeremy Clements, you look at the chase bubble at minus 28. He has to have some good runs. We're going to cut the field to 12 for the Xfinity chase here in just three weeks. And another guy who's having a good run is J.J. Yaley in the 44 car. Also, the 01 Orion Priest uh, having a really good run. Uh, those guys, you know, sitting there running 10th. So really good run for these guys as well. Yeah, Ryan Priest having a very nice run, currently in the 10th position, and they're one of the teams that pitted under the last caution, so they gained some track position on those guys who pitted under green. And in his last two races for Ryan Priest, as we see a battle further up front right now. You saw Ryan Priest wave out the window for the two up into the wall. Paul Menard, after he went by Ryan Priest, got up into the wall, so Priest takes the spot back. You see Ryan Priest, he's got the... He's got a little bit of a retro paint scheme as well, honoring Butch Lindley, a great short track racer. Uh, and really cool going back in time as you see a good battle here. 
Denny Hamlin trying to hold off Daniel Suarez. Suarez running that low line will take the spot away from Denny. Oh, kind of a slide job right there. Denny Hamlin trying to cross him over. Suarez carried a lot of speed into the corner, got in front of the 18, but was not able to hold his line, and Denny stayed aggressive, but they're going to go side by side into one. And it looks like, like now Suarez will have the advantage. And this is impressive, man. This is only the second, swore, second start for Daniel Suarez here at Darlington. He ran third last year, trying to improve on that currently in the second position. He's able to get by Denny Hamlin. 28 laps to go. Take a look at this close call. He drove it in the corner. Just could not hold his speed. Got into the wall. Pretty good contact right there. To a Paul Menard. Elliot Sadler has almost a second lead over Daniel Suarez, who's just taken second away from Denny Hamlin. Elliot Sadler showing the way around Darlington Raceway. Daniel Suarez has closed the gap between he and race leader Elliot Sadler. Three tenths of a second separating the top two. Daniel Suarez, one win on the season. You right, see right there. You know you're the... better than this one car. Just be patient here. He'll come back to you. Nice and smooth. The race the track. I like that. I like that confidence over the radio. 21 laps to go. You don't have to push so much that you get in the wall yourself. The one sees you, he sees you out his mirror. Just keep putting the pressure on him, see if you can force Elliott Sadler into a mistake. Can you see the gap said and done, though. You know, you're, you're a young driver, you want to win Darlington. This is a huge race to win. So it's easy to say, take it easy. And from a driver, you're, you're hearing 20 to go. That means, man, it's almost over. I got to go, I got to push. So it's a fine line between pushing too hard and not pushing hard enough. And even the Mexican born driver can understand and appreciate the magnitude of winning at a place like Darlington. So much history in this racetrack but you see it everywhere 
especially in the garage with 17 Hall of Famers here to watch this race. Well, another issue Daniel Suarez might have isn't that it's 19 to go, but the 42 of Kyle Larson, the last two laps, have run, has run faster than all three cars in front of him. He seems like his chassis coming in with 19 to go. I wouldn't want to stay too close to the 42. If I could clear the one of Elliott Sadler and get away from the field, I would try to do it. And see, that's been fairly consistent for Kyle Larson, either the first or fa second fastest car pretty, over pretty much the last eight laps or so. Larson certainly coming like he's been all afternoon long. Very good at the end of the run. Suarez in front of him gets in the wall a little bit. Larson says his car is still a little bit too tight. They went up on the track bar and took a round of wedge out. Still too tight for Kyle Larson, but clearly very quick. Kyle Larson is, is the problem for Larson. Not enough laps left in this race. Yeah, well, you just heard Marty say the 19 getting to the wall. I believe the 19 makes a pretty hard contact here. Exiting turn four. That is heavy contact with both right sides, and it seemed to have hurt the speed of the 19 as he loses touch a little bit with the one of Elliott Sadler. Trying to stay in front of Denny Hamlin, but that could be harder than he thinks as he's holding on to second, but Denny Hamlin coming. I think Elliott Sadler wants Suarez to be able to run just fast enough, but you can see he got really loose off the corner. There's the pass for second. Denny Hamlin takes it away from Daniel Suarez. I agree with you, Jeff. That's not what Elliott Sadler wants to see. Oh. He was hoping that either Denny Hamlin and Kyle Larson would be held up by the 19 car. Hamlin not held up. Now the gap between Elliott Sadler and Denny Hamlin, 1.2 seconds. Remember how much experience Elliott Sadler has. He's an Xfinity regular, but he ran in the Cup Series full time for a long time. Uh, he has a lot of experience. So Elliott Sadler is not going to, even if you have a little faster car, if Hamlin can run him down, it's not going to be an easy pass. Uh, Elliott Sadler is going to put up a fight. He has the skill and the experience to put that fight up as well. And it's been interesting to watch these two battle because after practice this morning, guess who sat down and talked? The rookie Daniel Suarez and the veteran, the four-time winner here, Denny Hamlin. Hamlin gave him some ideas on what he saw in practice. Also helped the 19 team with some ideas. He thought he might be good speed-wise. Now, obviously, Daniel, Daniel's gotten to the wall and Denny's back around. But teammates sharing information, they're both better, and the veteran takes back over second spot. When you talk about teammates, the car right behind Daniel Suarez is Kyle Larson, his teammate is the 48 of Brennan Poole back in the fifth position. First ever start at the Darlington Raceway. We talk about how difficult it can be for a rookie. A little bit of good fortune through those green flag cycles and the timely caution, but doing a great job of holding on to the fifth position. And Steve, uh, what a remarkable run, really, for Brennan Poole. And, you know, after yesterday's experience outside of the racetrack, he wasn't expecting big things for the weekend. What I'm referring to is in the middle of the hurricane rains here in Darlington, he had a dead battery in his car, his passenger car. He had to, had to change it out in the driving rain. Good thing for him, it hasn't been an omen. The car that he's driving now, full song, full power, and moving toward the front, running inside the top five right now. No adjustments on the last pit stop. That's just how good that car is. And now with only 13 laps to go, Brennan Poole, top five. Elliott Sandler, probably liking what he's seeing. He's got a pretty good gap. It's all out front, man. Do not look in that mirror. Hit your marks. Break this racetrack. There you have it. He's got a pretty good gap on Denny Hamlin, just under a second. So tell me, as a driver, is that like don't look down, and the first thing you do is look down? When they say don't look <laughs> in your mirror, is that the first thing you do is look up in the mirror? Well, that's Brett Griffith, his spotter. He has a lot of trust in Brett. They've known each other for a long time. So I think when you have a spotter that you really believe in, and he says just pay attention to out of the windshield, don't look in the mirror, you're more apt to do, more apt to do that. So. That's good. That's good advice. It's another thing to do oh, it though. Here. When you have a, you know, you have a guy like Denny Hamlin that's so accomplished, you know, has contended for Cup championships, won a lot of races. You have that guy behind him. It's hard not to take notice of that. So, with 11 to go, you do have to race the racetrack, but you have to do it at the pace that keeps Hamlin behind you. You don't want to let him get close because we've seen what lap traffic can do. We've seen if a car can get within two car lengths and you catch lap traffic wrong, that means that the guy can get by you. So you've got to push right here. Coming to 10 to go. Coming to 10 to go, Elliott Sadler. Out in front, has never won in the Xfinity Series here at Darlington. Two second place finishes, the most recent back in 2014. Now the gap between the top two, eight tenths of a second. Close in on the final laps. The pass for the win 
has been with three or less to go here in three of the last four races. Stretching it out big time, man. Just pedal this thing. Stay focused. Yeah, and you talk about it, you hear Brett Griffith again, but you talk about race the racetrack. But remember, to race this racetrack, you have to do it right against the wall. You have to be, you know, you have to drive into one. You have to go to that throttle, put the car right against the wall to make the lap time you need. So even though you have a good lead and you maybe hope to be able to take it a little bit easy, you can't take it easy here because the fast line is right against the wall. Huge lead. Over a second again. On the left side of your screen, we have two first-timers, Brendan Poole, and Eric Jones battling for the fifth position. Hard, I keep having a hard time saying this is Eric Jones's first time at Darlington with all that he's accomplished. Battle for the lead still remaining about seven tenths of a second. The battle for fifth quite a bit closer. This is the problem. You see the lap traffic. I mean that is that is going to make a difference in this race. If you catch lap traffic at the wrong time, you can lose. Almost a second. I mean, the guy behind you can catch you really quickly. So, got to time it right. Sometimes you may have to slow down a little bit so that you don't catch that guy at the wrong place. And there's more traffic coming for the one at Elliott Sadler. Just in front of him down the straight are you going to see two or three more lap cars. It's going to be all about how he catches them. As you said, are these cars going to let him through? Under seven laps to go for Elliott Sadler. Trying to hold off Denny Hamlin, who's won here four times in the Xfinity Series. Another three wide in front of the leader. NASCAR will display a white flag, or excuse me, a blue flag with a white stripe through it, yellow stripe through it, and that's indicating for drivers to move over as the battle for the lead continues. Elliot Sadler continuing to work his way around the lap traffic. That pass going by Dakota Armstrong. Luckily for Elliott Sadler, the 18 of Danny Hamlin is having just as much or maybe more trouble with the lap traffic. Now lap traffic taking both lines around Darlington. Denny Hamlin stuck behind. And these guys racing for the lead. You would just hope and expect that these guys just get out of the way. Just, just go to the bottom lane and let them go. It's not your day to day. You're not going to race for the win. Don't get in the middle of this race. Just get out of the way. And that's the situation. Denny Hamlin has to go below Dakota Armstrong to get back with no cars between he and Elliott Sadler. Under five laps to go. Now listen, Dakota Armstrong and Blake Cook, they're running 19th and 20th, and they're racing for position. So it is a difficult spot to be in, but the race for the win is more important. And you have to understand that, again, it's not your day. You know, try to get out of the way. At the same time, race. Don't try to give up your spot. But more importantly is what's going on with the leaders. Two of Paul Menard had a flat tire, so he was making his way onto pit road to fix that. The gap for the lead over one second. Under four laps to go. One main financial, the sponsor for Elliott Sadler. Had mentioned before that at the end of the season they would stop their sponsorship and get out of the sport. And then just recently they changed and said, you know what? Not only are we going to continue to stay in the sport, but we're going to go another year. But that last lap, Elliott Sadler lost three and a half tenths of a second to Denny Hamlin. They're clear of traffic now. It's going to come down to who has a better car. In that last lap, it was Denny Hamlin. Elliott Sadler being told by a spotter, don't look in your mirror. Hit your marks. Keep doing what you're doing. Two more. Two more, two more no, times Brent, around at Darlington. Another two Seven tenths. tenths of a second separating the top two. Can Hamlin catch him? Up into the oh, wall, the oh. one may have a tire going down. A oh, close he... shot there as he got up into the wall, getting out of turn two. And around the 18 will go. Denny Hamlin trying to get by the one. The one back by. A little smoke coming out of the back. One more lap, all you got to do here. One lap to go, sponsored by Credit One Bank. This is the area he had trouble last time. He got into the corner, got too high on corner exit, got up into the debris. That's what caused that issue. He and runs low this time through one and two, and Denny up, Hamlin has definitely caught him. One. Big run Good as they go one. down the back stretch. Three and four is all that's left between Elliott Sadler and Denny Hamlin in the checkered flag. Out of the way. 
All clear. Coming out of turn four, Elliott Sadler, 20 years in the sport, his first win at Darlington. Well, it got exciting. That one small mistake on the exit of turn two gave Denny Hamlin an opportunity. That's what it feels like to win at Darlington. Oh, I love you guys. Thank you all so much. Whew, I've been wanting to win here for a long time, boys. That is Elliot Sadler's 12th career win. And you heard in his voice, I've been wanting to win here a long time. How about the Darlington stripe that he got with two to go and looked like he had lost the race. Got into the wall. Denny Hamlin took advantage of it. Got to his inside. Looked like he was going to make the pass. Elliot Sadler would have nothing doing. Elliot Sadler will climb out of the number one. Head over and grab the checkered flag. racing NASCAR back in 1995 it's been over 20 years that he's been a part of this sport and to win at such a historic and iconic racetrack as Darlington is such a huge event how about the last two laps last moments of this race see Elliot Sather everything looks good not much time to go in a race as he enters turn three. We talked about this. It's easy to get around here, but not quickly. So it gets a little high right there. And now he's in all the debris. He's in all the tire rubber that gets packed up against the wall. And look how much speed comes out of the race car. So they go down into turn three, and the one commits to the top of the racetrack. The 18 looks like he has the move. But look how aggressive the one is able to get back to the throttle to clear the 18 off from turn three. Jeff, I think he knows that here on this next lap. The one does a great job of defending. Yeah, so watch the one car this time. Look at the gap. But watch what the one car does this time as opposed to the first time. Look how low he is. He said, I'm not going to make that mistake again. He stays way away. But look at what that does. It slows his speed down so much that the 18 has a big run. But smartly, he says, you know what? You're not going around me on the outside. He gives him the bottom of the racetrack, takes the line he prefers. He knows he can carry more speed off the exit of four. He trusts Denny Hamlin's not going to run into the side of him. Made one mistake, but after that mistake, he did everything right to overcome it. Great win for Elliott Sadler. He'll make his way to Victory Lane, a very coveted place at Darlington Raceway. You can say you've won at Darlington. You've won at one of the biggest tracks in all of NASCAR. Elliott Sadler wins in the Xfinity Series at Darlington. Well, all I will say.
at one of the most historic racetracks on the entire NASCAR circuit. Elliot Sadler, the veteran, finally finds himself in victory lane. He's raced here in the truck series. He's raced here in Sprint Cup and in Xfinity, but he'd never been able to find that checkered flag first. And with 15 laps to, oh, drink it in. Yeah, drink it in. 15 laps to go, you said this will be the 50, longest 15 laps of my life. Before I answer any questions. I didn't ask you a question. <laughs> this is for Dale Earnhardt Jr. My owner's giving me one heck of an opportunity this year, and I know he's going through a lot this year. This is for you, my man. All these guys in the shop that work so hard. One main financial, lending made personal. It's come back to us for a multi-year deal and the win at Darlington. I told you this morning the stories of this place and myself. This paint scheme, Dale Jarrett riding shotgun with me today. It's a very emotional day for me. I got my family here with me. It's, uh, I've been wanting to win here for a long time. Amanda and the children, you guys can come on in here, celebrate with Dad, get a hug. This is awesome. Dale Jr. was going through your mind late in the race. What else was going through your mind? Well, we've been through a lot the last month or so, and all the executives of One Main Financial spoke about they believe in this sport, they love the fans in this sport, they believe in it, and they want to invest in it a couple more years, and it meant the world to me. And Kevin Andron and his whole staff, everybody at Junior Motorsports, have made me a kid again, give me a great opportunity for us to come here and win at Darlington. I've thrown one away before, and I almost threw this one away, but it's very special. It's cool to do it here on a throwback weekend with this paint scheme that's meant so much to me. Longest running Xfinity sponsor there is. One main financial win. Thank you guys so much. It means the world to me. Elliot, this is Darlington. It, it is so hard to win here. What did you go through today handling that race car? Well, if we're being honest, I watched a lot of videotape this week. And I called my crew chief and I told him, I said, I, I got to change the way I drive this track. Denny Hamlin whipped us here last year. And he can run so good up against the wall in three and four. And so I had to do that. I had to adjust my line. I've never really run that high all the way through the corner in the years past. So I watched a lot of tape. I made some adjustments through the run and uh, was able to hold him off at the end. And that's all that counts. I just, I love these guys behind me. I just love being able to put them in victory lane. It means more to me than anything. Elliot, the colors on this race car go back to 2005. I just checked 23 times you started in the 90 car and didn't have a victory. What does it mean to take this paint scheme to victory lane? Well, for two big reasons. One, one main financial and what they meant to this sport. All of our partners uh, here at Junior Motorsports. And two, I met Dale Jarrett here in 1996 and he was practicing for the Winston Million. And he took time to teach a little kid from Virginia how to get around this racetrack. And that's why his name's on the other side. He's meant a lot to me to my career, not only as a race car driver, but also as a man. So uh, there are two big reasons why it's so special to be here in Victory Lane. Elliot Sadler's a good listener, and now he's a winner at Darlington in the Xfinity Series. I think that emotion explains how, how big Darlington is. This racetrack, winning here is it's just like winning nowhere else. It's the tradition here, uh, all the things that have happened here, the history, the heritage. It's Darlington. It's, it's just an incredible place, and you want to be a winner at the marquee racetracks in the sport. Well, it, you know, there can only be one winner in NASCAR each week. You know, 40 cars start, one car wins. We saw last week with a 24-year-old Kyle Larson how excited he is to get his first win at Michigan, and then this week a 41-year-old Elliott Sadler. Such a long career in both the Sprint Cup and the Xfinity Series, and you still hear the emotion. This is a driver that thought he was losing his sponsor earlier this year. That has turned around. That was great news for him. Has really found a home at Junior Motorsports to extend his career, trying to get back to Victory Lane. And you, like you said, Jeff, not just back to Victory Lane, but back to Victory Lane here at Darlington. I mean, for, for a guy that has accomplished so much in his career, it's, it's quite surprisingly just the emotion from an Xfinity Series win. And a 41-year-old that's willing to learn. A 41-year-old that said, yep. hey, I got to be better. How can I do this? And he talked about Dale Jarrett happening, helping him here years ago, but even still today, years later, what can I do better? How can I learn? What can I do? Watch a lot of videotape. And then, then saying, you know what? I need to do something better. That's the sign of someone that wants to be successful. Rick, he told us that story this week on NASCAR America. We talked to Elliot before coming here. He, he, he was really excited about this paint scheme and just explained that whole story about coming here. And it was great because we got to hear Dale's side as well. And he explained, you know, Elliot said he came here. Dale Jarrett was 
practicing for one of the biggest races of his career to try to win the Winston Million. And he took time out of his day to take Elliott out on the racetrack, show him where he needed to run way back in the 90s before he ever knew he'd be a teammate to Elliott Sadler. Yeah. Fast forward all these years later, they go to victory lane together, one on the left side of the car and one on the right. Elliott Sadler at the time was just a 21 year old and you look at him now and you'd say that's the emotions of a 21 year old winning at Darlington and it means so much it means so much to this driver to be able to get the win at Darlington the spotter and longtime friend Brett Griffith right there but you know I, I think too I think at 41 wins me more to you you know and I, I mean you know that you know, you're not going to race into your 50s, you're, right. you know, and so you realize that as you, you know, not that Elliott's, you know, career is getting ready to end, but he had a scare. I mean, a few, a, a month ago, he thought that his deal was over. Right. There was no sponsorship. So he saw the end of his opportunity potentially staring right in front of him, and then one made, made the decision to come back, stay in the sport, and now he's rejuvenated, come here and win one of the biggest races of the year. What a great day. What's going to be fun is... Elliot Sadler is going to join Dale Jarrett on the post race show here in just a few moments. Uh, Denny Hamlin finishing second uh, just moments ago was able to talk with Mike Massaro about that finish. Another very impressive run for Denny Hamlin here in Darlington second but I know man you could taste that victory. There was an opportunity when Sadler got in the wall. How are you trying to take advantage of it. Um, you know, I knew his car was going to get really tight uh, after he hit the wall there. Um, I'd, I'd kind of beat up our right side a little bit on that run. Just um, probably my fault. I told, you know, Chris, the crew chief, that, you know, he had to do something to tighten us up if we had to race anybody. And we just overdid it, and, and I was plowing tight that last run. I, I got, you know, wasn't good on restarts. Uh, you know, all that, uh, all that means we finished second. <laughs> but uh, congratulations to L.A. Sadler. You know, it's uh Try to win it for Sport Clips, uh, help a hero. Uh, you know they, they do a lot for this weekend and do a lot for our military. So thank Gordon for them. Uh, thank Gordon for that. And um, you know it just came up short. I, I really would have liked to got a win here, but uh, you know we'll have to wait till next year. Danny Hamlin does come up a little bit short. Cannot add to his win total here in Darlington, but still another very strong run as he comes comes home second. Take a look at the chase standings with two races to go before the chase. Now Elliott Sadler with two wins. Eric Jones three, Daniel Suarez one. The top nine have clinched a chase spot. It means that they can't fall out of the top 12 points wise, but that still means that there are three spots that will be fought for to see who can get into the chase. You see why Der Dakota Armstrong was racing so hard. You know, he's only 18 points out of it. So we talked about trying to get out of the way of the leaders coming, but you know, racing for that last spot, you have to stay aggressive. Yeah, and only two races. Two races from now, they'll set the chase grip. What an impressive run, though, for Elliott Sadler. Able to fight off the late charge by Denny Hamlin. It's time for our post-race show. Let's go to Krista, Kyle, and DJ. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoy today's broadcast.